What's going on everybody, Gar Hoover here and today we're going to be going through my track conveyor on the PO33. Now conveyor is a uh, deep house or lounge track. It's pretty simple but the chords and what I do with the chord sample is really interesting. I make a fake delay with it which is what you hear throughout all the song. And so if you have yet to hear Conveyor, you can check it out in the description below or right here. Or if you want to download the samples and use them however you like, you can download those in the description of the video. And with that being said, let's get started looking at this track. I'm sorry for the weird layout where it looks like I'm kidnapped or something in this strange dirty table. But this is as good as I'm going to get for now as I continue to try and figure out a studio space in my basement. And so let's just get started by looking at the samples. We got the bass. You can hear it's a little buzzy. The key was to filter that, that high end out with a pretty wide open low resonance. And then just cutting out the high end like that. And you can still hear some of the high end in it and it's just removing all that extra buzz. The next thing is the sampled chord. That's all it is, just one chord that carries throughout the entire song. And then we have the just click sound, put a little bit of reverb on it before I sent it to the PO33. Then we have this organ sample kind of organ made it in massive and it's the same chord as this right here which I believe is just like a C minor 7 or something like that very simple and then we just have our drums and you can hear I always layer my hi-hats as usual just so I need only one drum kit but for this song I added an additional one when I have a few other accent sounds that I want, and it's just a duplicate of the original kit. Alright, so now let's take a look at the intro in the verse. So let's just stop right there, because this intro really lays the groundwork for the rest of the song, especially with this chord that's playing throughout. And you can hear it sounds like it has delay on it. Let me go back to the first pattern. It's the same exact rhythm for each one of these. The chord just changes. So I don't really have to cover that too intensely. It's just on the 5 to the 10 to the 11. So it's just like a classic deep house minor 7 chord that's being transposed around. Sounds a little jazzy or fun. Adds that solid um, kind of vibe that you would normally hear with deep house music or lounge. And you can hear that delay that's taking place. And that wasn't included in the original sample. We hear no delay. And so I'm faking a delay here. And let me show you how this happens. So let's first figure out where my initial, these are my hits, I would say. These are the loudest uh, versions of the sample in the track. So those are the actual hits and then the rest of the rhythm taking place in the sample are considered the delays and what I do for that is this is our original volume and then I roll this down so it's a little quieter and then every two I add a note a replication of the chord And you can hear there's a little bit of a pop sometimes with the changing of volume in between. Uh, you just kind of have to roll with that. And so those are each one delay, but usually delay have more tail than that. So what we're going to do is add another one that's even quieter. And that goes, if there's space, so we have this initial hit, and then this one, we're going to add another one every two until the next big hit. And so we do the same thing there. And so we get this solid rhythm that's a really cool groove to it, but it's a very tight delay as well. We have control over it. It's not going to tail off and make a mess later on because we're faking the delay here. And that just carries throughout 
the entire song for the most part, except for like the outro of the chorus. And so let's take a look at the verse and what that has to say, or I have to say about it. So pretty simple here. What we're doing is the same chords are taking place. We can see that that rhythm's the exact same with the delay on. Let me just highlight it so you can see it a little better. And then to further emphasize those initial hits that are kind of our example of the delay, I have the bass hitting on 1, 4, and 11 as it normally would replicating the chord hits. So those are going on on each one. Nothing too crazy there. It's just following the chords. That's all it's doing. And the drums are the new introduction in this area as well. And so this is the standard rhythm that we have throughout the entire verse. And so we just have a kick without a hi-hat that's taking place. And then we have this shaker sound on the third vertical row, which kind of behaves more like the offbeat, the off for a hi-hat. So if you're ever making house music on a pocket operator, if you're at like 120 to 110 or even up to 138 or something trying to do some trance, always hit this vertical row if you're looking for that off beat with the hi-hat. And then we hear this other hi-hat action going on on 8. Just adds a little variation. You can hear there's a little bit of swing in there. So what I did was held down BPM and twisted this knob to adjust the swing. And the swing's only at like swing two, which is really low. And I just wanted that to have a little bit of groove in the drums, but I didn't want it to mess with my delay. I don't want a swung delay. People don't really do that. And so we hear that going on. It's the exact same rhythm for the each of the other ones other patterns in the verse except for this final pattern we hear that click sound and that's taking place on the second drum track I made so if we're looking at all of the active sounds we have if I hit play we've got the bass going the chords going the drums going and then the extra drum with the kind of 808 clave going and so we're still using four tracks. We haven't maxed it out, so we're still good to go for now. But we're going to have to start to share the tracks later on as we gain dynamics. And so that's it for the verse, and now let's take a look at the chorus. Okay, so on to the chorus. This introduces more dynamics to the drums. Let me just play it for you. So that's what we're going to look at first. And once again, the bass is doing the exact same thing as it was in the verses. Same with the chord. The chord is the exact same. It's just changing chords at the same rate and the delay still going on it. But what we do here is the, introduce, uh, the introduction of this kind of chill lead line with this like triangle wave that I made. And what it's doing is just hitting at the same spot, which is the root of the chord on five. And it's dropping. I, I, I'm trying to remember what note that is. It's actually, I believe, out of. It's not. I'm trying to figure out which one it is. I guess it's out of the key and I had to transpose it. But what you hear is that the same note is that I'm just. And that's all that's going on there, except for that final note right here. This lower note is the same for each one of these patterns. And you can hear that there's kind of that fake delay going on at the beginning of the lead line here and so it's a short hit and then it's replaying at a lower volume similar to what we did with the chord 
and then it's playing again and it's ringing out until this alternate hit. So that's really it for the lead line. But if we hear the drums, the drums are really adding a lot of energy here. So what we did is we kept the drum or the kick without a hi-hat going here because we didn't want too much energy. We still want to incorporate more dynamics as the song goes on. But you can hear I have the kick layered with a hi-hat layered with the rim shot. You hear that difference? This one's got the kick. You can hear the lower frequencies instead of this one, which is just the rim shot. So that keeps it with a steady four on the floor going on here, but with the rim shot included, layered on top. And then we have the shaker still going on the third vertical row. And instead of the normal hi-hat action, you hear sometimes an alternating version of it, which actually is down here. I forgot about it. And we have those secondary hits with the rim shot without the kick. So that's going uh, right here on 10. And that kind of gives it that kind of almost the like I'm in break type of feel to it. And you can hear that. It, so I have a normal first pattern. So we have that really fun solid groove. And for this final one, before it loops around, I have it hitting a final time on 16 as well with the, just the clean rim shot. Just to add a lot more energy so it either can loop around well or transition further into what becomes the chorus. All right, so now let's take a look at the chorus. So you can hear this has a lot more energy than the previous version of it. We're building off of the foundation that we've had laid out thus far, and now we're hitting a new direction with it. And let's start first with the drums, because the drums are really what are adding a lot of energy here. So instead of just an empty kick, we're moving over to the hi-hat layered on top of the kick. And that adds a lot more energy. And especially with the open 909 uh, hi-hats that we have. Where are those? Those just on the offbeat really add that classic house groove. And to choke it, we're actually using that same hi-hat sound that we are using in the previous section but instead of having it on eight, now it's on four. So it's a variation in the rhythm. And so you get that good choke that happens because each one of the drum banks, you can only have one sound playing at a time. So I utilize that to just make a natural choke. And so that's really great. And then we have the clap but it's layered with the kick so and the hi-hat. So it's this really high energy, still four on the floor, but now we have this clap going, which is a little bit louder and a little more high energy than the rim shot. And if we continue, same groove. Except for the final one, we just add a kick here with the layered hi-hat in the same fashion. And just because it that additional kick can kind of add a little funk or swing to it. And just add that double hit action going on instead, which is a lot of fun. And if we go on to the lead line, that's really what's changing because bass doesn't change chords don't change what we're adding is more 
um, notes to this line that we've had established in the verse. So if I go to, let me go to the original first pattern. That's all it is. So this was the note I was trying to find in the previous section, which is that lower note. But here instead of going, we're going. So it's just an octave jump really is what it is because every other row on the pocket operator for the melodic scale is an octave. All these are octaves. So that really helps just if you're trying to add variation, doing octave jumps, whether up or down for bass lines or for lead lines, really adds some fun variation. It keeps it chill too because your ear still recognizes that it's a similar note, though it's just a little bit varied because it's an octave up. So it's not like a really obnoxious lead line, something that you wouldn't want in a house or especially like a chill house or a deep house song, but it just adds a little additional energy for the chorus. And so all we really do, once again, That's all we're doing. It's a very simple line because I'm just following the chords around and just adding these octave hits. And so that's all it really is for this final chorus section. It's really chill, but we have one more section that's taking place and that's kind of like the outro to the chorus. I wanted to add something that changed it up because those chords are going throughout the entire song. And as great as they are, I didn't want like the listener's ears, your guys' ears to get tired of them. I wanted something that was a good change of pace so that when they came back around, uh, it was welcome again instead of just droning on in the background. So what we really have going on here is we still have the chords taking place. But instead of it having the rhythm going on, we just have one fake hit. The lead hit, which is right here at one. And then the rest of these are lower volume. And they get quieter and quieter as it goes on, creating that fake delay. And if you notice, instead of having it be a eighth note delay, we're kind of doing a dotted eighth note delay, which is instead of it being every two to create the delay, we have it every three. So you go one, two, three, and then one, two, three, and then one, two, three. Let me guys sh show you the difference for this. Let me show you guys the difference. I just said that all reverse. But here's how it would sound. Wait, that was really weird. See how that doesn't really sound that interesting? It's not as exciting because it's just that straight delay. But if we do it where it's every three, instead we get... It's, it's got that better feel to it. And even this final one needs to get lowered a little bit in volume to just stay consistent. So you, you're still hearing a familiar sound going on. It's just tailing off a little different. And that carries through. Still the same chord progression. Let me turn it up. That's all it is. And we're incorporating here as well, just to add a little more space or a little more presence, I guess, is just this kind of fake organ chord. And that's just, instead of having it ring out, I wanted to have more control over it. And if I do, here, let me turn it up, where it kind of resets every time. It kind of works with the groove a little better than just having it ring out. It's a 
very subtle variation that you might not notice while listening to it because the kicks are covering that repeat, but it really does kind of keep it feeling um, a little more energetic. And with this too, when it comes to this final pattern, and I transition back to the first pattern, nothing's tailing off because if I have it where I'm just having it play a chord and just having it go, let me show you the issue here. So if I have it just doing that, I can have it full length. You can see that loop full, or I can adjust it to 14. I can't do 16 or 15. It's either 14 or full, which means it's gonna carry out beyond what I want. And if I only did 14, it would stop before the loop or the pattern's over. Which sounds kind of good or all right with those little additional hits going on, but I wanted it to carry throughout. And so if I try and do the full pattern, here's the other issue with it. When I loop around, it sounds terrible. It's continuing on beyond what I wanted it to. And so doing the layered or the hits every quarter note and having it ring out and now adjusting the length only to four steps keeps it nice and tight and that really helps a lot. So that's what's going on with the organ sound. Bass is a little bit busier in this section. So it's kind of following the similar groove of what it was with the, but instead it's, I have it going an octave jump, but I don't, I can't, oh, I guess I can just pitch it up. That's what's going on there, is just it's doing the octave and then the fifth. So it's doing the same thing here, is, but it's just I transposed it. So it's I have to actually go outside of the scale to keep it consistent with the chord because of how it transition or is transposed on the pocket operator. So to keep it in key, I had to make this one out of tune slightly. I had to pitch it up uh, a half step for it to work with the actual fifth instead of the fifth that it's trying to set it to in the scale on the pocket operator. And then the final one, excuse me, is the exact same. Lower octave, jumping up an octave to the fifth. So it's, it's, that's all it is going on there. So it's that fun difference in rhythm in the bass too that kind of adds some good variation, but it's not too energetic necessarily. The other thing that we notice here is the other drum fill that's taking place. And what's going on here is I'm using the second drum bank and I'm doing a small little drum fill with the click and that's all I'm doing but this is where we're getting to the issue of overlap possibly if you look at what each sound is doing for this pattern we actually have almost five sounds that are going to overlap but You'll see. So we have these three sounds going, this drum kit that's always going, and now this one. So if we we have five sounds that are actually taking place in this pattern, what we have to do is share the four audio tracks or else we're going to hit a point where one of them is going to be cut off from the rest. And usually that's a drum track that's getting cut out. So what I did is for this final section, I made sure that the chord that's doing its delay stops right here at 10. And I shortened the length 
so that it only goes to the 12th step. And so that means that it's stopping and that frees up that track. So I still have three tracks playing. And instead, for this final row, um, sequence 13, 14, 15, 16, I can fill it in with the drum fill instead. So it's all about just being conscious of how each track is being used and learning how to share them. And you can get a much fuller sound taking place where it sounds like there's a bunch of instruments playing all at once, but really they're just sharing the audio um, appropriately and they're stopping when they should. They aren't tailing off longer than I want them to be. And then the other thing we have is the drums for this section. I didn't look at those yet, but we just have the layered hi-hat kick going on. We've lost the clap. So it's letting us know we're kind of tailing down here. It's chilling out. But we still have the open hi-hats going with the similar um, just closed hi-hat on the fourth step. And that's going on for all of these patterns here. And that's going to do it for today's video. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you have any suggestions on how I can make these tutorials better, also leave those down there. Any suggestions there? I have my additional tutorials here available for you guys to check out and other songs too. As always, I hope you guys have a great week. See ya.